Are you ready? Can crush us. Hey. It don't really get no better than better this. The than. podcast that you're looking for. If you're really heavy in the wrestling, hosted by the Mark. Energy that's so amazing. Gotta keep it entertaining. Rep the Can Crusher Nation. Yeah, you know what's going down in the ring. In the ring. Lights out when you hit a ding ding. ding, ding. Knock them out like boom, bada bing. Bada bing. Hold it down, you can crown me the king. Got a shout out to the Miz and Duke the Dumpster. We choke slamming everybody, power driving. Hit them with a face buster. Yeah, yeah. This the show you need an and it ain't no need for waiting. Mark, hold it down for the can crush a nation. All about wrestling and keep it entertaining. Can crush us wrestling podcast. Time to break them. Let's go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can crush us. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can crush us. Let's go. Everyone, this is Ringside Rain, and you're listening to Can Crusher's podcast. And now, here is your host, Mark the Mark Martinez. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome back to another Can Crusher's Wrestling podcast. I am your host, as you heard from Ringside Rain, Mark the Mark Martinez, and this is not Sir Michael Jenks. This is one of the longtime hooligans, one of my best friends. In Kentucky, one of Care Crusher's favorites, Ryan the Riot Mosley from The Final Count. Ryan, how the hell are you doing? I'm doing great, man. Doing great, Mark. How, you, how have you been? I have the biggest smile on my face right now because it's been a minute. All right, we're going to lie. Fourth wall down. We talk all the time, but it's been a minute since you've been on the podcast. Shame on me. Or shame on me, either way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah yes, it's, it it's both of our faults. It's both of our faults. So, right. So, we'll get the wrestling. We got to do our... Guys, it's going to be the same podcast as me and Jenk, so settle down. So, how the hell you been? What's going on? Tell everybody what you're doing. The final count still kicking ass and taking names, right? Yes, yes. Uh, we actually launched... Re- well, did a, uh, I guess you could call a relaunch. Um, back in I want to say February, March, something like that. It's around WrestleMania time. Um, and we came back with a episode, one episode, and then we came back a little a couple months later with a few more. And so we're we're on the road right now. So um, we're not letting them off as typically as we were, but we're still letting them out. So. That's all yes. that matters. You're you're yes. touching out to and you're getting wrestlers on the show, guys. Shout out! It's called the Final Count. It's on every freaking platform out there as well. Listen, he's got a lot of cool interviews. That it, it's funny. It almost like we reached out to the same people in like back to back weeks. It, it's um, who was it? Was it? Was it Jada? I think. I think it was Jada. Yes. Yeah. It was funny. I looked on uh, after a couple weeks after I had interviewed her and posted the interview, I believe, and then I saw where you had to interview her. I was like, "Oh wow!" <laughs> hey, side note, guys, Ryan and I kind of work together, talk to people together, and everything like that. We don't like piggybacking each other mm-hmm. because it's not. It's not that it's not cool. It's just give Ryan his time with person. And it was like a, maybe like two weeks since I talked to you. And I'm like, oh, I got Jada Stone. And you're like, uh, idiot. I just had her. I'm like, ah, it is what it is. We usually try not to piggyback, but it happens, right? It does. It does. So what else is new? I, uh, I'm going to ruin it for you right now. I see you are making a huge improvement on health. You're... From what you told me, you were just running amok with this new, like, lease on life right now, right? Yes, yes. Like, I'm uh, I'm not going to be ashamed to say it. I'm down 10 pounds um, from where I started. Um, if you do follow me on Facebook, um, it's not on the final count Facebook page, but maybe I'll, who knows, maybe I'll post it on there at some point um, and just share it on there. But if you do follow me, you know what I start, what my starting weight was. And so I'm just taking back my life and taking back my health overall. So, and that's great. It's all it is, is uh, doing these interviews, Ryan, and I'm sure you get it as well. Wrestlers, even at the age, you know, I'm older than most of them any, anymore that I've talked to, 
But it's all about that 1% better than yesterday. And that really sets in for me. And I, I see it with you now. It's always wake up. So I, and I know it's rough to put a smile on your face every once in a while, but you wake up, you put a smile on your face, and you feed the dog sooner. You do the dishes sooner. You do something. I mean, it's irrelevant in life, but it just makes you that much better, you know? Yes, for sure. Like, you know, me and you have talked uh, all for, the time. Yeah. For, uh, often. We talk often. And, like, so, uh, you know, I, I have those days. You know, we all have days, but I just, like, I could not be in a better place right now. I can hear it in you. Sorry, I was taking a drink. I can hear it. And I I read it when you sent me that text about being down that much. And I'm like, you felt, you know how you can feel stuff even through texts? At least if you're you're close with friends and everything. I mean, you're not going to feel anything from Target or any place like that. But, you know, when you have a friend, I know when you hit send on that, I'm like, he is bouncing all over his house right now. He is full of joy. He is, you know, he's just been touched again. Yes. I tell you what, I, I st- stepped on the scale um, for the first time in the longest amount of time that I've been able to step on the scale and actually see results. And I saw results for the first time, just being able to see and the scale not say error. Um, so that was a big, huge, like, feel good moment for me. Yeah. Congratulations, brother. Uh, I love you, and you know that. I tell you off air. I'll tell you on air. I love you. Yes, love you too, brother. So, uh, other than the health thing, what else has been? uh, What else has been going on? What are you uh, tackling? What more can we see coming up with the final count? And and because we're gonna get the wrestling, and it's gonna be a battle of the nitwits. I think today. I don't know. Maybe we'll see. But uh, yeah, just encapsulate everything that's been going on elsewise. Well, um, for those that uh, may not know, um, so like you said, we'll get into the wrestling a little bit. Um, but uh, other than just the the uh, new health journey that I'm on, um, I've just been really uh, big on. And so maybe you might not people might not know your listeners might not know my listeners probably don't even know that I am uh, now. Ever since March of 2020, I've took up playing the keyboard. And so I lead um, worship at my church and sing. And so, yes, uh, that's pretty much, uh, you know, just doing the family thing too. And uh, just being real involved in my church for real. That that's another awesome thing to have, you know, patting yourself on the back because it makes you feel good. Uh, I've been physically with you kind of like twice. I stayed at your house one night We've had these talks about what it means to both of us to have, you know, church and God and whatever, you know, me being Catholic and I forget which one you are and I don't mean to mean, but I mean, it's all like, it doesn't matter as long as you believe in something, you just have that aura and you give me that aura when we're chatting. Like I was kind of like, oh, I'm doing a podcast tonight and I, and then you sent me a text. You're like, are you excited? I'm like. Ryan is what I need tonight. Ryan is my shot of um I don't know what drug gives you a high or anything like that, but or something. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan's my drug tonight to get me through this crazy weekend. So yeah. There you go. So all right, let's trickle to wrestling as we updated you. Again, guys, I'm gonna make Ryan give you all the socials at the end, but it's really it's called the final count. If you know the final count. Yeah, you should go listen to it. Let's before we dive in, and I'll let you pick which one you want to first: uh, AEW or WWE in segment number two. Hot topics, though, uh, of what kind of is is going on. Um, I think we have to start with the, the passing of Kevin Nash's son. I mean, tragic, tragic. And I didn't, until my buddy sent it to me, I didn't put two and two together that he passed on Razor Ramon, a.k.a. Scott Hall's birthday. Like, we know we had we lost Scott recently, but that's a tough shot for Kevin. I know losing a son, but it's also the first year that your best friend, Scott Hall, has been passed on his birthday. Man, uh, thoughts and prayers to the Nash family. That's It's just, it tore my heart apart. 
for sure. It's such a such a sad situation, and uh, yes, our hearts and our thoughts and our prayers go out to uh, Nash and his family and um, his friends and everything. I, I just so sad what happened, uh, you know, and because it was uh, what I, from what I read it was unexpected, and so like so so bizarre, like wow, it just. You just can't take things for granted. It, it just shows you can't th- take things for granted. You can't take people for granted. You can't take life for granted, for sure. Uh, agreed 100%. It, it's got to be really um, – I was going to say v- Viva Las Vegas is not the one I was looking for. But it's like live live for the moment anymore because you don't know, you know, that might be my last breath. You know, it's just roll with it, enjoy your life, and – as long as you believe and have somebody that you believe up there, you're going to be fine. This For sure. other nonsensical stuff is just that. Exactly. So, again, from myself and uh, and Ryan, you know, thoughts and prayers go out to the Nash family. Um, I know you have one, too, maybe a couple, because I, I only threw two at you, and I said, bring whatever you want, because you are a podcaster as well. You know how this works. Yes. Um, the other one I want to bring up is CM Punk rumors, and this one's going to stir the pot, I think, between both me and you, and I'm okay with this. This is what I want on this show. This one is just us. We'll give you the wrestling hate today, folks. We'll give you the wrestling hate today, but when we hang up, we'll both tell each other we love each other as well. <laughs> exactly. Um, CM Punk, let's start there because I want to know your whole aspect of what happened with the scrum. Where are you with Punk? He may be released. He might not be released. He has an office job and now rumors. That's all it is right now. All of this rumors. He may want to go back to WWE today or he might get a buyout and then go to the WWE. Where are we, Ryan? What are you telling your peeps? So I, I, I'm gonna say like, I first of all, I don't see him ever returning back to WWE. That I don't know, just something about about it, just something about him. Just you know, and I'm a I'm a CM Punk fan, um, and so I'm a CM Punk mark, <laughs> and so uh, yeah, I don't see him going back to WWE. Um, as far as the AEW situation. I think he could have handled the situation differently. Um, obviously, the Young Bucks and uh, the Young Bucks and all the other v- yeah. VPs in the company, they could have handled the situation a whole lot differently, um, and should have not been fighting um, and you know physically um, at, at all. Uh, so the situation it's just like it's a crazy situation right there. It really is. It really is. And I posted, guys, because, of course, we're recording Friday and you're listening Saturday. I posted this yesterday about the whole CM Punk on Facebook. And we got a couple back and forth. And somebody some um, somebody said, Punk will never go back to the WWE. I said, okay, stirring the pot because I'm Mark. And Ryan knows how I like stirring the pot. Yes. <laughs> we never thought Bret Hart was going back to the WWE either. Money. That's a valid point. Money. We never thought Hulk Hogan, after the roids thing, and after his most recent stuff, and after the trials, and da 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 da, would ever step foot in the WWE again. Wrestling does have a short term memory. It, it it really does, and you know what? Now that you bring that up, I think about uh, Ultimate Warrior. Look at all the trash talking he did on WWE, and then of course it was it became too late eventually. Um, of course, nobody saw what happened in that circumstances coming, but you know he went back even after all that was said and done with him. Um, and so yeah, that's a good point, valid point right there. But I agree with you. I think there's pure hatred. I am a huge, I'm a huge CM Punk fan. Autograph picture in the studio, tattoo on my arm, you know, all of that. Uh, I've waved the CM Punk flag from day one, and you know when we he was straight edge to the goat and da 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 da. 
I don't think him and Trip see eye to eye. I, I I don't I don't care. Like even when we was on that Fox show, what was that Fox show with Renee and Booker and I forget what it was uh, called. I believe Backstage Pass. Yes, yes, that when he was on that, it felt awkward that he was on that with them. Maybe him and like Paige, oh, Soraya now, maybe were okay. Or maybe Renee was okay with them. And, you know, they weren't involved. They weren't in the WWE at that time or fully engulfed into it. Right. When Booker was on with him, it felt like, oh, like the mega powers colliding again all over. It just, there was something off with that. Now, I loved it that he was on TV, da 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 da. But I'm like, this doesn't feel right. When he came yeah. to AEW, that felt right. But I think I, he's, I I think he's done unless he goes to the Indies. Yeah, and I don't see him going back to the Indies. Um, now, see, another thing about that backstage pass, so that was all an ESPN thing. Though it was WWE, it was still right. It was kind of not WWE as well. Yeah, his contract wasn't through WWE. Yeah, right. I mean, look at all that, so... Yeah, so, of course, I just put that up there to stir the pot. Unless it is, you know, a $4 million pajillion dollar contract that anybody would not pass up, there's too much baggage there. Prove me wrong. Yeah. But yeah. I, I don't think with almost dying from staph infection, I wouldn't go back to a job that almost killed me. Oh, no. Definitely not. No. mm so, but if the money's right. Well, if the money's right, I don't know. No, I, don't, I would probably get killed from the wife then. You almost died there and you're going to go back? Yeah, you can retire now. Yeah, right. you're going to die tomorrow. Yeah, you know. Uh, what'd you bring to the table? I know you got a couple. Uh, so, uh, one that I do have, um, first and foremost, first and foremost, uh, I want to mention about uh, Ace Still. Um, I read where he was released from the company, so he was also involved in that um, in that altercation uh, with Punk as well. Um, so, like, that's like really, you know, really crazy. Like, Ace Still, you know, he's. Um, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, now he was in OVW for a while. Many people might not know that. I'm not. Do you, I'm not sure if I didn't. Even aware I, of that. No, I had no clue until you just brought it yes. up. He had been in OVW for a while back in like 2007, um, and so that was when they were under the WWE developmental uh, deal that they had. Um, but yeah, like it's really crazy. Like uh, with a still, I don't think he was in WWE. At least I don't believe someone can. Someone can correct me on that, um, but uh, yeah, it's just a really, uh, really crazy deal right there with Ace Still too. Yeah, I, I think the um, to to bounce off of both of those, I, I think the writing was on the wall that somebody was going to go down uh, out of all of this, and maybe things can be patched up with. Kenny and CM and the Bucks and everybody else, because they're your money makers. Maybe, maybe enough time has passed. I don't know yet. I hope so because I love them all. But uh, somebody's got to take a fall, and kind of a steals CM Punk's right hand man in all of this. For sure, for sure. So. He he can get a job somewhere, I, I, without a doubt. You know, with what he has, his resume is pretty awesome. You know, and oh, yeah. he can go to Impact. He can go to any of these. You know, I, I want to say maybe like a super indie type of, of show to help out and you know get them higher up. Maybe he can go to NWA and and push there. Um, and if Punk does go to WWE. Maybe that's his in there to work a little bit. I mean, he's got a resume. He's good. Don't get me wrong. But, yeah, yeah, it was – he had to be the fall guy. You clearly weren't all out firing your VPs. Exactly. Yet. Yeah, exactly. Yet. Maybe. We'll see. Right. Yes. That's the key word. 
All right, so out of let's just say the VP is the Young Bucks and Omega, which one do you let go, Ryan? Do you let both Young Bucks go, or do you let Omega go? If it has to come down to it, if it has to come down to it, I let Omega go. I do too. Um, yeah, that's. I feel like he might have been more the more the um, the shit stirrer. I'll say it. Yeah. <laughs> For lack of better words, yes, or word that I can't come up with. <laughs> yeah, I I would think, and don't he's in better shape than me. I'm not knocking him, but he's a, he's a little bit older on the on the on the spectrum. There, he just came back from some major injuries. The Bucks are not super young, but they're young, and, and they're you know they still can do some stuff. And, you know, there's still some storylines built in that are lingering around with the Bucks, So I, I guess we'll have to see. And who knows? It, it's wrestling. Every, everything could yeah. be swept under the rug, and then we could get uh, mega returns here coming in at full gear. That is for sure. That is for sure. Definitely. Uh, you mentioned uh, Impact. Um, I want to throw them some love a little bit. So I was Except Daniel movie. Spencer. No love for that guy. <laughs> Right, we can't throw Daniel Spencer some love. No, no love for you, Daniel Spencer. <laughs> uh, but uh, so they are taping. They're doing some tapings tonight and tomorrow night. And reportedly, uh, PJ Black, former WWE superstar Justin Gabriel, is starting with Impact this weekend. I saw that. I actually, it, it's it's called Sin City or something like that. Uh, yes, I just actually looked at that. Before we started recording, I'm like, man, this looks like a great card. I can't wait until I get to watch it via however I get to watch it without giving spoilers. Um, yeah, it, it looks like a great card. I, uh, I've i always been a Justin Gabriel, PJ Walker fan. You know, like he's, he's always been an uber high flyer before we got to the over-the-top high flyers. And I always throw Ricochet under the bus. She's just way too much for me, or maybe yeah. even the Lucha Bros a little bit too much. Gabriel was that one. I'm like, oh, my God, this guy can fly, but he doesn't over go crazy. So yeah, I, he doesn't do it. Yeah. Yeah. I believed his, unlike the other two aforementioned people that I named. Exactly. And see, like, I, I hope that they um, – and I know Impact will utilize him. Uh, the correct way they should um, because impact really does put on great wrestling shows and great wrestling. Um, it's more wrestling driven, not so much story driven, although you have to have both. Um, but like, I believe that uh, PJ black, he, I believe he'll, it'll be, he'll be a good fit. And I hope that they do keep him um, for a good amount of time. Like that. It's just not a one-off thing or something like that. Yeah, he fits in there great with Trey, and I, I actually love the the Allen Angel signing too. I really did a couple couple months ago when they got him. Yes, yes. So i I just wish more people got to watch Impact, and it would be more of a topic on all of wrestling, not just you know sporadically here or there. It's just there's got to be Ryan. There's got to be another channel that would say, "Yeah, I mean, what what's TNT do? Oh, no, well, not TNT. Uh, the Country Channel, or you know, something like that. Why don't they grab an impact? Access mm -hmm. is in what twenty five percent of the houses in America. That's right, rough. Right. Yeah, you guys can go out and buy the Impact Plus. I believe it's what." Seven ninety nine a month to seven ninety nine, yes. Or you can do the Impact uh, Insiders, which is like four ninety nine, and so it's kind of the same deal. But with Impact Plus, you get more. So yeah, I mean, there, there's enough streaming places that you can watch it anyway. But yeah, okay. all right. Do you want to uh, dive in the week of pro wrestling? Let's do it. All right. First, we got to do a couple things. We have to pay the bills. Let me do these hooligan things that we do here. Guys, you know we're available. And check out the final count as well. 
We're on Stitcher. We're on iTunes. We're on <laughs> Apple Podcasts. We're on Spotify. We're on Boxcast. And wherever, whatever platform you're listening right now, essentially we're on all the other ones as well, as well as the final count. Make sure you check us both out. Give us that like. Give us that follow. Give ratings. It helps us out in the back end. It really does. So that's cool. Ryan, you're gonna cut, you're gonna chime in here in a minute. You want to find us? It's on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. All ours are at CanCrusher69. Ryan, what are yours? So uh, at the final count, KY, that's you can pretty much find us on all your social medias, your Instagrams, your Twitter, uh, Facebook at the final count KY. And we both have email addresses. This goes out to anybody that would like to be on either show. We love doing interviews. We love, we're generic that way. We love hearing stories about how you got into wrestling, why you got into wrestling, this, that, or the other. So you want to be in a show, either DM us on all the socials or the old fashioned. And Ryan, do you believe it's actually called old fashioned? Like email's an old thing now. Like now I feel like I'm, 110 like they're like oh you still email yeah <laughs> i do but if you want to if you want to reach can crushers it's can crusher 69 at gmail.com and the final count the final count podcast uh 2017 at gmail.com there you go and this goes for both of us too you could buy a shirt from me you could buy a shirt from ryan and but they would all be from collar and elbow Hats, hoodies, tees, all the cool stuff that Collar and Elbow has. Al Snow and Hooligans are working hard to bring cool shirts all the time. I'm actually wearing my, and I say generic, if Al would listen right now, he'd punch us both in the face. But the the original property of Collar and Elbow, just the gray one, it's awesome. I've had it for years now. It doesn't stretch out. It, it's Ryan, what do you want to say about Collar and Elbow shirts? They're amazing. Oh, definitely. They're definitely comfortable. Um, great fitting shirts for sure. Uh, definitely. I love my collar and elbow shirts that I have. Yes, for sure. And when you buy a shirt and you buy two shirts, make it two different orders or pick one or the other. I don't care today. My promo code is can crushers. All one word, capital C and can capital C and crushers, Ryan. And my code is the final count. K Y. And that's uh, the cap- capital letter for the T. And you save 10%. So use yeah. either code. You'll help either podcast. Do whatever you want to do. Just do it today. Just buy something. That's all. Right? Yes, for sure. Go support us. Thank And thank you for your support. Yes, thank you very much. All right. Here comes Al Snow to tell you more about Collar and Elbow. When we come back, Ryan, AEW or WWE? Uh, let's go AEW. All right, deal. Wrestling, a love and a passion we all share. I've started a wrestling brand, the wrestling brand. A brand founded on the aspects of wrestling. Two entities working together to create a product that connect emotionally for people everywhere. Collar and Elbow is the brand. Passion and love for wrestling is the drive. I am Al Snow, and this is Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand. Hey, this is the Barbie Killer, Haley Shadows. I absolutely hate can crushers, but I'm going to be on it, so stay tuned. And welcome back to Can Crushers Wrestling Podcast. It's Mark and my co-host for the day. Once again is Ryan Mosley from The Final Count. Ryan, you picked AEW. So I'm going to ask you this. Why are we going to AEW first? Uh, Just something new. Um, I I don't know. That's the best answer I have. Something new. Just a new fresh kid on the block. Sure. I'm fine and dandy with that. Ryan, we have actually not spoken a lot about AEW. We we dabble, we we talk about OVW, we talk about Impact, we'll we'll throw some stuff around with WWE. So I don't know, and it's not a hate thing that I'm throwing this at you. I I don't know how you really feel about AEW. I've never asked you that question, essentially. 
Yeah, so, like, I don't get to watch it much, um, but, like, I like it. Um, now it does have that WCW vibe. Uh, I can't get into a lot of how they have the, uh, the oh, my goodness, the the factions. Like, every everyone seems to be in a faction. Like, come on. I've, Why does everyone have to be in a faction? I've heard that before. And, yeah, uh, I don't have a defense to that. I don't know if I have to say anything good about that or bad about that. But yes, everybody is in a faction except me and you. And <laughs> maybe we need to start our own faction. I think we do. I really think we do. So you- and then another thing, um, the overuse of blood. Like I, I'm, I like blood in some matches, but if it means something, you know. Um, Moxley so that- leads every week. I understand. Yeah. That's where you're going. Yeah. yeah. I think for Mox, that's just his character. Like, uh, you know how the boogeyman ate worms or, you know, stuff right. like that. I think that's Mox's character. Okay. I'm okay with that. But you're right. There is a lot of blood on AEW. I am a strong component for it, uh, advocate or supporter of it. I am, you gotta remember, Ryan, I'm an, I'm an ECW guy. I I do love, I do love it, but it's gotta be where it comes from. You know, blood doesn't get blood would come from the heart, but it has to make it the right time. It could happen in every match for me, but I gotta see how it happened. You know? Yeah. If you just peek under the ring and then you come out bloody, I'm like, hmm, what the hell happened there? Well, we know what happened there, but how are you going to sell me that that happened, right? Right. What are some things that you like, though, about AEW? And then we'll get into some of the matches that uh, took place this week. We're just touching base here with Ryan. Uh, So some things that I like about AEW, they are bringing in uh, the new stars, um, uh, well, new stars, but known stars, um, kind of the same thing Impact did back in their TNA days that they still do, you know. Um, but I like the uh, the new stars, the new names that they bring in, um, you know, and they're, I love that it's another place for uh, people, um, for wrestlers to go. I love that, um, I love that they're putting ROH uh, on uh dynamite as well um so that's a big thing uh yeah i that's what uh that would be some things that i like with uh aew you can tell you're a true mark wrestling fan whatever you want to call yourself because you gave the the best answer there in what i would think that it's another place for wrestlers to go because there is there's a million and three wrestlers i think out there just in, you know, one state. Like, there's so many wrestlers nowadays that, as a child, I didn't know about. I think it's nice that they have this next platform to gravitate to. So, yes, you you understand the business. As it trickles up, well, I mean, you have OVW in Kentucky. We have kind of like the sister OVW, essentially, Maybe it never has been a developmental for anybody, but, you know, now you would say they're both indies, right? You would agree? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yes, 100%. Um, so in Pennsylvania, we have IWC, which has, you know, brought Wardlow and Britt and, you know, Punk has been through, Claudio has been through, like the names have been through. Essentially the same thing that OVW was to WWE and Impact for, you know, yeah. continuing impact essentially now. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So we have, we got the, the the best of both worlds here going for both me and Ryan. Um, all right, let's break down some matches. Let, let's break down some matches uh, that you liked throughout the week. And character-wise, I want to know what characters first uh, that you actually gravitate to when you are watching AEW. So when I'm watching AEW, um, I really like uh, um, Baker. as far as Britt. like the male Britt. superstars. Britt. Uh, really, Britt. Britt. You're, you're supposed to say Britt Baker there. 
Yes, Britt Baker, but okay. she's not a male. <laughs> Just Sandy you Zavala. were supposed to say that one first. Uh, well, okay, Britt Baker. <laughs> All right, now you can go through it whatever you want to. Go ahead. Uh, uh, Sammy Guevara would be another one of mine. Um, and then I have to go with Jericho. Yeah, I know he's been around for years, but I have to go with Jericho too. I'm glad you went Jericho because this is the one that I really wanted to get your thoughts on. Because Jericho, and you brought up ROH, nice transition there from both of us. Um, I love what he's doing for ROH right now. Because ROH was like the super indie show uh, of everything. It fed WWE, it fed AEW, it fed Impact. But they've never really had a major leg to stand on because you would have people there for years, but you knew they're not staying in ROH. Uh, We don't need to name them. You know them, Adam Cole, everybody that's been there. They were never going to completely stay there. But Jericho is the greatest ROH champion right now, and I love that he hates the disres- the, the, he has the disrespect for this championship. This gives mm-hmm. him. This gives ROH a TV deal by themselves soon. Agree or disagree? Oh no, I completely agree. Uh, you know, I like the direction, um, and I do believe that you know they do. I, I, they do need to branch out away from AEW, like away from Dynamite. Um, so I definitely agree uh, that Jericho being the champion will be able to get them to a TV deal separate from AEW and Dynamite. Yeah, it may be the same station. L- right. Listen, folks, it may be TBS and TNT all over again. But there's there's Saturday nights available. There's Maybe ROH is essentially a syndicated show as it was for a little bit, and it, it's thrown on whatever time there isn't basketball or Atlanta Braves. The Atlanta Braves don't play baseball in there anymore, but you understand what I mean if you're an old-school 605 guy. It, it just depends on when it gets thrown on there. That's a win for them because right now, ROH is only bringing in, oh, they're not bringing in any money because, you know, they're pay-per-view money, but that's once every three months, essentially, right? Exactly. Yes, yeah. So, sure. uh, yeah, Jericho's killing it there. Uh, Sammy Guevara, uh, it, longtime listeners of Can Crushers know that I have a man crush on him. I, I love him. I've loved him from Wrestle Circus down in Texas. I, I saw him way back then. Just love the guy. Uh, he has so much hate. He is somebody that you completely hate because he's an ass. <laughs> yeah, I I have to agree with that as well, for sure. Ryan Ryan, Ryan does not I have a – if you haven't noticed, guys, Ryan does not have a potty mar- mouth like Mark, but that's all right. You guys have been here long enough. What are your thoughts on which I think is kind of one of the hottest, if not the hottest storyline, MJF right now? Oh, yeah. <laughs> How can we not talk about uh, right. well, You, you didn't mention that he was one of your favorites. <laughs> well, I didn't think about that, but he's not one of my favorites. I do like I, – I like him, but I don't – he's not one of my favorites. So let's put, let's put it that way. Uh, but, yeah, I like the um, whole thing with how he uh, left the company and everybody thought, like, oh, he was – like how he didn't show up at uh, – what was it? Um, all out. The no, he was all, all out. out. Yeah. yeah. All out. And then he no showed the uh, signing that he was supposed to be at and everything. And so, like, you know, and it made everybody wonder, is this part of the storyline? Is, you know, what is going on here? Is he leaving the company? You know, what's going on? Or did he resign? Did he, you know, is he leaving? Is he going to WWE? I like that they put in those teasers with him. So I like the, the realness and the realistic uh, that they brought into uh, his story, um, for sure. Yeah, this past week's promo, him and Regal uh, on Dynamite, it was Tuesday night, by the way. If you guys have not watched it, go back and watch it. It was it was a tough pill to swallow. Like, the whole, 
hey, I wrote you letters for months, Regal, and you wrote back, I'm busy, I'm busy, and then you finally wrote back, I'm paraphrasing, guys, I'm too busy to watch your stuff, Max. When you get good, let me know. He he was booed at that time walking out of the curtain, but by the time he got done telling the story, everybody was supporting him, and the heat was going on to Regal, but then Regal, the old son of a gun that he is, spun it right back around saying, because you're not there yet. You're a backstabber. You're this, you're that. I think he is the greatest talker right now in wrestling because he's just so damn hot. Oh, for sure. For sure. Like, can we compare him to The Miz? Uh, maybe a Jesse Goddard's if we're going on AEW or if we're going on OVW. Um, yeah, like, that. all three of them are great talkers. Yeah. Like, and they're, you know, they're all three. They all three kind of have a similar look. Um, so I, yeah, he's definitely one of up there with one of the best as one of the best, uh, if not the best going today. Yeah. Um, matches, I, the matches this week on dynamite were, were pretty stellar. It was called title Tuesday. I, I just thought maybe a little predictable, uh, overall. I mean, we, we see this orange Cassidy feud going on with Pac, I think that match or maybe that storyline itself may be over because there's some dissension now in Death Triangle. Um, do, do you see Pac leaving or do you see the Luchas getting rid of him? Oh, yeah, I, I'd say uh, Pac would leave them instead of the Luchas uh, getting rid of him. Yeah, I, I think okay. the same thing. I think this hammer is in play. This little ring hammer is now the new Triple H's sledgehammer. For Pac, yeah. essentially, which yeah, okay. Tony Tony Storm and Sheeta put on a hell of a hard hitting match. Um, I didn't see Sheeta winning from the start, though. I, I knew that you know something funny was going to happen. Have Britt come out. Maybe we got a returning Thunder Rosa, but I mean I, that has been leaked for a while. That Rosa has pretty much canceled anything until the end of the year. Um. Besides signings, I mean, she's going to be at WrestleCade. Thank God I need to meet her. But um, she's not doing matches. Um, how do you feel, Ryan, on the interim stuff? So I'm glad you brought that up because I was just thinking, like, you know, I would actually love for the interim thing to – the interim champions. Um, can we just get on with it and have a – just an AEW Women's Champion? Uh why does it have to be an interim champion? Like, I don't, you know, yes, for a little bit, but not for so long. Uh, agreed. And I think it, they didn't want, when Punk got injured again and we had, you know, the scrum and he came back and da, 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 I don't think they wanted to have two interims because then you, everything in your whole, you know, atmosphere of AEW is all for not. And Tony right. Storm said it, we just need to get rid of this. It's the old school wrestling across the board. You get hurt. And I want to go back to NWA, you know, you got 30 days to defend this. You can't, you drop it. Day 30, if you're, you know, air quotes hurt and it's a story, make your rear end out through the curtain, you know, get jumped, take the pin, do whatever to keep it in story. Fine and dandy. Interim is just not cutting it. And it's no yeah. disrespect. You know, there's some people saying Rose is faking this or, or whatever. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a DMD. I'm not a psychologist. I'm none of those things that get the DR behind it. So I don't know. But Rosa, if if you're really hurt for a long time, you'll battle back. You'll be okay to give it up. Some okay. Some are saying that Rosa doesn't want to lose to Tony. Uh, yeah, I, I think I could see where that would where that would come into play. Um, you know, Tony T Tony Storm is a uh, is a threat to Rosa, um, and so I think Thunder Rosa, yeah, she could be 
she could be possibly um, putting on a uh, front with this uh, injury. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so uh, I guess we'll have to see. Um, I don't know how we didn't start here as we're running through my notes. I'm such an idiot. I'm being Ron Burgundy and, and this scrolling through them. Mox and Page, uh, end of the match, takes a King Kong lariat. Page is knocked out, possible concussions. The next day he tweets, hey, man, I had a panini and I'm feeling all right. So I wrote back, I'm like, at least you had a panini. He didn't just text it to me. I, I meant tweeted it because why, why would Adam Page just instantly reach out to Mark? But, I mean, he tweeted it and said this, that, and the other. Um, that looked rough. Like, it, it looked hard. And, you know, our thoughts and prayers actually go out to Adam Page as well. That that, yeah. that injury is, you know, you get back from the mend. But then, devil's advocate, Ryan... Is it just to get Paige away from the title for a while? Because we know what's going to happen, and it's going to be MJF and Mox for a little bit. And what does Adam have to do? You know what? Uh, maybe he's, you know, it, it could be a thing of just getting him away from the title picture. But then, you know, uh, like like we see, uh, you know, MJF uh, announced that at full gear he's cashing in. Um and so, like, you know, it, it definitely could be just a way to get uh, Adam uh, away from um, away from the title picture for sure. Uh, yeah, and I I think he definitely deserves uh, to get back to to the picture for sure. Yeah, I, I do too. I think you know I truly believe, or they really got me that it, it was an injury. And, you know, the whole battle back because he's kind of AEW's underdog, right? I mean, he started yeah. with the whole winning that, facing Jericho, losing, not seeing Jericho again for years. Da, 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 da. So he is the, uh, Al Snow would probably call him a darling, right? Isn't that the word? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that was uh, kind of dynamite in, in a nutshell. Rolling back to Rampage. Uh, uh, we'll just do that. Uh, so let me ask you this then, because Rampage wasn't that great. The last couple of weeks, yeah. Rampage has been on, as we haven't really covered it hardcore either. How stoked were you when Soraya came back? Oh, my. Yes. <laughs> okay. You knew Very I was getting there. Stoked. Oh, yes. Yes. I was thrilled. Like, oh, my goodness. Stoked. Uh, like, I'm so happy to see her. Of course, you know, and, and the back of my mind is always like, is she before it came out that, yes, she is uh, cleared? Uh, you know, in the back of my mind, I was thinking, well, I hope she's cleared, you know, because I don't want her to go over there and start to get in the ring and get active in the ring and start to have a match and then something go wrong. You know, so definitely I was definitely stoked to see her back and see her there um definitely for sure first opponent i think is you know it's clearly going to be brit and i oh, think yeah. I, I yeah i mean it's, it's a given if you watch aew it's a given um and i think it's it, it's poetic because it soraya i don't want to say needs to win but come on it's her first match back when it happens she gets the win Britt yeah. doesn't. Britt doesn't need anything in AEW. She is, as we call her on the show, she's one of the pillars in AEW. She's she's a. I'm not comparing it. Well, I'm going to get a lot of heat for what I almost said, but I'm still going to say it anyway. Britt's a Jericho of that women's division. Essentially, she can win. Yeah. She can lose. She doesn't need a title. She can just be around. She's just AEW's darling woman, essentially. So, and it's a huge win for uh, Soraya to get that win over Paige after being off for seven years. Was for it, sure. Was for it sure. seven? It's definitely uh, seven. Not, something like that, six or seven, yeah. Yeah. So it, it's a match Brit wants. It, it really is. So that's cool that they're going to work together. I'm, I'm stoked for it. Two of my favorites of all time. Um, So let's speculate a little bit. His, you were the booker here coming forward. MJF get the title off of Mox? Yes or no? 
I definitely yes. Yeah. All right. Of course, that uh, I agree with you 100%. Who's MJF's next victim then? Because he has it for a while. Mm. Uh, you know, that's a good a good question that I really have to put some thought into for sure. Ah. Uh, mm. I say just to give you a little glimmer, I think it's somebody like Morrissey because the whole firm is falling apart real quick or something like that. I, I mean, clearly he's going to have, and I'm not saying opponent for a reason, because he's going to have this title for a while. That's why I'm saying yeah. victim. A couple people are going to lose before there's actually a real story, I think, with MJF. So Morrissey to kind of break away from this firm that he doesn't need them anymore. Yeah, that, no, definitely. I can see that too, for sure. Um, and yeah, I'd love to see Morrissey go up against them for sure too. Right. Yeah, I agree. Um, another thing that's going on in AEW that I would like to maybe predict in break up. I hate war Joe. Uh, can't crush your fans. Know this. I hate, I hate, I love both of them. I hate them together. Because it means two titles are getting no justice on TV. The ROH TV Championship and the TNT Championship, which Wardlow had a battle through 9 million people to get a match for. Now it's not being defended. It literally is just a prop for him. Yeah, for sure. Uh, he needs to. He, it needs to be defended. They need to take more... Um, seriousness with these titles for sure. Um, like make people care about them. Like if you're not putting them on the line, if you're not giving me a reason to care, why am I caring? Why am I, why am I watching? You know? So, yeah. Uh, the, the, it's a title for a reason. You have to build a story yeah. around it. It's yeah. what somebody wants. I mean, Wardlow didn't want to win this title just to have it around his waist or hold it. Exactly. So, to hold up his tights. Yeah, hold up his straps. That's it. I'm done. <laughs> um, overall, though, uh, I I love AEW. I, I know this. Uh, you guys hear this week in and week out from from me and Jenks, but it, it's it's so much fun. It, it gives you, dude. We, for 20 years, we only had one thing, so it's refreshing. One for talent to have elsewhere. We kind of mixed it up. You said the whole WCW vibe. I'll give you that with ECW thrown in. It's just, yeah. it's not for everybody because some people were like, oh man, I, I didn't like WCW back in the 90s. Just don't hate on it then. Just turn it. You don't have to, you don't have to watch something that's on TV, right? Exactly. And that's the beauty about wrestling. You know, there's so much variety, especially nowadays. There's so much variety. Um, and so you don't have to like one. You don't have to like them all. You can just like one. You can just like two. But just go out and support them. You know, watch them. I agreed. I couldn't say it any better. All right, Ryan. That's a that's a wrap for a. Unless you want, you have anything in AEW you want to bring up? I didn't give you a chance to have a topic at all. Do you have anything that you want to bring up? Oh uh, no, I think we pretty much covered it for sure. All right. All right, so that means we'll trickle over to WWE. Probably more that we'll fight about in WWE than AEW. Um, one may be the greatest return ever without a spoiler. With No, that is a spoiler. Oh, my God. It's almost like I've been drinking all night. I have not. <laughs> we'll be back to talk WWE here in a minute. Hey, everybody. This is Cherry. You are listening to Can Crushers Podcast. I hope you enjoy. And welcome back to Can Crushers. It's time for segment number three. It's WWE segment this week because Ryan said we have to go AEW first. <laughs> and they're like, wait, what? Who the hell's Ryan? It's Ryan Mosley from The Final Count. Guys, make sure you check out his podcast. Ryan, did you just hear that comeback? It was Cherry. Yes, I definitely did. Like, wow, Cherry. That's uh, Now that's taking me back to my OVW days for sure. <laughs> Um, yeah, like not my OVW days of continuously going there when she was there. Um, wow, like the Deuce and Domino, her and Sherry, or them with Sherry, rather. Oh, uh, yeah, that was some awesome times. Um, well, and then you think of like Roka, 
uh, Melina Roca, which was uh, Rosa Mendez yep. in uh, WWE. And so, like, such a great um, time in wrestling in, in OVW. Uh, that was, like, around the 2006-2007 era of OVW. And, uh, yeah, Cherry's one of my favorites. She uh, was always one of my uh, all-time favorites. Yeah, uh, guys, that, was, that wasn't even meant to be this way, um, but cheap plug if you haven't heard the the spotlight that we had with cherry run back and listen to it just head over uh whatever you listen to on spotify da, 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 to find the link you guys know how podcasts work just find that uh what a sweetheart we did talk about some ovw days we talked about a little bit of this with a little bit of that uh by the way if you're in the winston-salem area during november 25th 26th and 27th she'll be at wrestlecade too Stop by and meet her. She loves fans. You'll hear it in the podcast. Um, I will ruin this right now, Ryan, for your podcast version here on Can't Crushers. She might get to crush you for the podcast of the year. I was so engulfed into her interview. I mean, it, it's it's Uh-oh. in it's in the top. It's it's in the top. It's one of you know. It's not super emotional. It was just the stories that she released that I loved it. I, I love talking to Cherry. Uh, yeah, she well, was one of my favorites. And if she's, yeah. if she's listening, she'd be like, oh, I don't want this guy around me at WrestleCade. So <laughs> she was one of my crushes, man. She's one of my, and you can't lie either. She was one of my crushes. Oh, yeah. And I, and I can see why she would be one of your favorites, too. I mean, look at her. Yeah, right? Now we're creepy. Um, let's stick and stay on OVW for a minute. Then we'll get to WWE folks. We'll get to WWE. We got plenty of time to talk WWE before you throw some stuff out at me. I want to say this and I want to see how you feel about it because you get more OVW than I do. I'm not going to lie. I I watch it essentially when I can, but you know, we both talked to Jada, um, this Wednesday. So I'm going to spoil it right now. This Wednesday spotlight is with Savage Not Average Judy Hendricks. So yeah. make sure you hold out and listen to that. Ryan, I have said this. There's another women's revolution in coming. And they're all going to be from OVW. I'm telling you that. I mean, the, sprinkle some others in around as well. But definitely, the, yeah, you have Judy, you have Jada, you have yeah. Dream Girl Ellie. You have Freya, uh, you have Hollywood. I mean, this is they're building something, and you're going to see maybe all of them don't trickle right to WWE, or all of them don't trickle right to Impact, or all of them don't trickle to AEW. At some point, they're going to meet again, and they're they're just going to build up so much. I'm telling you. Go ahead. Now you can run with it. <laughs> Oh, no, I, I completely agree. You know, um, for sure, like, you have uh, you have Freya the Slaya. I mean, she's, like, a powerhouse in OVW. Uh, you have... Um, I forgot about the champion, know, Layla Gray. Don't forget. Yeah, Layla Gray, and who's also a, a AEW um, talent who is uh, one of the baddies um, with Jade Cargill, um, for sure. Um, she's, like, and she's already on the main stage. I mean, so... You know, she's already getting out there, you know, so many opportunities for uh, these women in OVW, even right now, that they've already been on AEW Dark or maybe they've done a dark match for WWE or even a TV match for WWE. Um, I mean, like Hollywood, Haley J, like she's so talented and um, she's one of my favorites to watch. And uh, Ari Alexander, uh, who is uh, right now goes by Atari. Um, she's with, uh, Ryan Howe yep. or, uh, Ryan Von Rocket. And so like, yeah, like for sure the, the women's division in OVW right now could not be any more stacked than it possibly is right now. So your you go to many events at the, the historical Davis arena. So I don't want this coming out of your mouth unless, unless if you agree, cool. I'm saying this, and I'm putting it on record, and I love all the guys. Spectacular, da da da. I, I love them all. I think the women are killing it more. No, I definitely would have to agree. 
I'm not 100%. I mean, I don't want any any guys coming at either one of us, but I think Maria, amazing Maria, who is, listen, folks, we know, kind of like the coach in the locker room, the mom in the locker room, is just giving it and just feeding these women the absolutely best stories and everything that can happen in professional wrestling. And it's, I said, it's creating another revolution. I completely agree, for sure. So Al, Doug, uh, guys on, on the on the roster, we're sorry. Better Step pick up. up. Yeah, you better pick up your game. You, you said it first. They'll see you before they see me. So uh, yeah. <laughs> So fill me in on some of the guy stuff because what's going on in OVW and uh, who are some people that you think uh, we, we just we said watch the women's roster. So let's give the guys some props as well. Who are some people that should be watched on the guy side of OVW and you know people should still be watching OVW for free on YouTube, idiots. Exactly. Uh- now, for the guys' side of OVW, I would say definitely, for sure, one of the top guys in OVW um, is uh, Cal Hero, the fanny pack kid, Cal Hero. We love He's, him. for sure, definitely someone who fans should definitely be looking out for. Um, he's he's young in the business, and he's going to make – and he's grown up in the business, too. And so he's, for sure, going to be one that will make a name for himself, and he already has – but he will he'll he'll just grow bigger and bigger, um, for sure. Uh, some other people I can think of uh, would be the uh, current OVW, uh, the current OVW uh, Rush Division champion, uh, Luke Curtis. He's someone to look out for, for sure. Um, I could definitely see him going to like Impact for sure. Uh, uh, soon, um, soon. Oh yeah. Like he has that look for that he could be definitely on impact. Yeah, I I want to give props to let's just throw this out there. One of my good friends in OVW, Cash Flow, Two Belts Cash, Cash yeah. Cash. What, what else can Cash be? Because Two Belts Cash is it sounds good, but there's got to be a Cache Cash or something. You know, he's all cash. What? Top dollar cash. Top dollar cash. Yeah, so, I'm trying to link with two belts or something. He is one of the most humble, amazing human beings. Go back and I, I, again, it, this isn't this wasn't made for self promotion. It really wasn't. I'm sorry, Ryan. But go back and listen when he was on. Holy Christ, probably three years ago. But he is awesome. Like he, a couple of years ago, when we had wrestling in Dubois, Pennsylvania, you guys uh, around in and around our area. I hadn't seen him in a couple years. I'm like, oh, he gave me the biggest bear hug. I'm like, hi, buddy. And he's, he's just, he's an amazing human being. Like, vet in the business that wants everything done right and takes care of the rooks and the noobs and anybody else like this. He needs, you know, get ready. I'll get hate. At least a cup of coffee at his age. And that, that's where I'm going to get the hate. At his age, I would love for him at least at the bare minimum to get a cup of coffee at any of the big three so people can see what you've missed out on. Oh, definitely, for sure. Yeah, uh, I agree. Like, And he's, he's believe it or not, he's uh, worldwide known. Uh, he is. For sure. And so, like... Yeah, he definitely deserves a main stage um, showing or showcase uh, for sure. I definitely, uh, yeah, I definitely love to see that. Uh, someone else I'd like to uh, mention, uh, the current OVW uh, Kentucky heavyweight champion, Jack Vaughn, the veteran Jack Vaughn. Yeah. He's someone that you should definitely be looking out for too. I actually saw Jack for the first time. Ugh, I don't remember when I went. I went to F. SG Future Great Wrestling FGS FGW FGW Mark is the way it would be in Cincinnati. Uh, I went out to see Shauna Reed. Oh, by the way, that's another one that pops in and out of OVW. Shauna Reed. Um, yes. Haley Shadows as well. I, I, again, the women's division. Just look it up. It's amazing. 
Um, I saw Jack for the first time at Future Great Wrestling in Cincinnati. It's close enough to Cincinnati. Just trust me. Um, he was amazing. Uh, I, I love him. I love the gimmick. I love everything about him. I love the technicality of it. I just love the throwback. So much Larry Zabisco in him. That's exactly yeah. who I thought. Yeah, this the the old school wrestler type feel. I love it. Yeah. Uh, another person that should get dues as well. All right. OVW guys, Ryan uh, covers a lot of OVW. Again, check out the Final Count podcast for that. He'll give you more than I will uh, on OVW. I'll get some trickle people for spotlights and everything. But that's a long enough tease, Ryan, that it was a long enough tease to talk about the greatest comeback ever of Bray Wyatt. Yeah. Yes. Definitely. Like, I'm so stoked that Bray Wyatt... And how awesome was that return, too? Like, after the match, after that... Uh, the match between Riddle and... Uh, Seth? Riddle and Rollins at, at Extreme Rolls, that was... That return, I loved it. Yeah, that... I, I agree. I agree. I, I love the only thing, and people heard me say this last week. I think the QR codes did nothing for me because I wasn't getting on for the QR codes. I waited for the co host or other people to tell me what they were. I wasn't, I'm not. There's times I want to do extra work, but when you knew, you knew, you knew. When it was a white rabbit, you knew that you knew it was going to be Bray. Yeah. I didn't need to hunt that far. I just wanted to see the pomp and circumstances that he came back on. And I'm like, all right, how are they going to do this? Is he going to interrupt a match? Or da, 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 da. That blew my mind when all the characters were alive. And I'm like, oh, my God. It, yeah. <laughs> shivers when I saw, again, my favorite one, Huskus the Pig. I, he may make my sleeve tattoo. That guy. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, what the heck's his name? Joe Gacy being, I, and that's, I, I, we gave ours last week and I'll let you give yours here in a second. Joe Gacy is Huskus the pig. I'm sorry, Joe. You cannot be anything but Huskus the rest of your life because it's awesome. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. Uh, I now my favorite has to be rambling rabbit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, my mine is Rambling Rabbit for sure. Um, now, I do, uh, I do not for sure know who I would guess who would be Rambling Rabbit. Uh, I don't know. I you you believe that it's, it's Joe Gacy for Huskus the pig, right? Oh yeah, Huskus. I could see. Yeah, Joe Gacy for sure. Yeah, <laughs> he has that look. Yeah, and last week. I think both of us said Abigail is going to be Alexa. Oh, yeah, definitely. The Rambling Rabbit, I think we both said it's going to be his brother, Bo. Yeah, I could see that, too. Yeah. And then Buzzard is Waller from NXT as well. Yeah. And then the other Bray... And we'll talk about what happened Friday night, guys. Slow your roll. And we'll talk. Um, the other Bray, we think it's just another persona of Bray Wyatt. It may not be a person, per se, to be Bray. It's just going to be him jumping back and forth, kind of a la Dude Love, Cactus Jack, and uh, Chainsaw Charlie. I mean, yeah. mankind. So. Yeah. Uh, last Friday, at the beginning of SmackDown, we saw Carrying Cross and Scarlett get no wreck and then got beat to heck by Drew McIntyre. Are you happy? And I'm transitioning all of this. We'll get there. Um, are you happy to see Triple H bringing these people back that we were all shocked in the very first release that got released and, and you know, continued to get released? Are you happy that... Oh. People are coming back like that. 100% happy about it. Um, I love what Triple H is doing with the company. I feel like the company is in a, a better direction, a much better direction under the leading and guiding of uh, Triple H. Um, you know, look at who he's brought back. Uh, uh, 
Dakota High, Eel Sky, um, and then like you have the uh, returns of uh, you know Hit Row. Uh, I love Hit Row. Hit Row is one of my favorites. You have um, Karrion Cross and Scarlet. Just so many, just that he's been bringing back. You have uh, Candice Candice Lorray. I mean, come on, right? Mrs. And wrestling. Darnell. Mrs. That's wrestling. Cool. Yes, I agree. But this is where we're gonna fight. I love that they're all back, and it's a lot of people coming back. Some are gonna get lost in the shuffle again. And yeah. And that's what sucks. Even the big ones that came back. Bray's going to... I don't think Bray's going to get lost for a while. Dot, dot, dot. Right. But I think he may. Unless you give him... the. And I'm not saying the Undertaker persona. But the Undertaker treatment then. But has he earned that, Ryan? You know, to me, I don't think he's yet necessarily earned it. Um... And I'd have to agree that, yes, if you give him that persona and uh, yeah, it will be, uh, it will be a while till he, you know, gets lost in that shuffle or gets, you know, um, so they get, okay, well, he's, you know, it's, he's that new toy now, but okay. Now another toy has come along. Another toy has been brought up from NXT who we think is the new hot flavor, the new better toy now. Yeah. What happens when that, that time comes? Exactly, and it's going to. It, it it always happens after WrestleMania. Spoiler: If you don't haven't watched wrestling in your life, but it always happens after WrestleMania. Yeah. Or there's another person that is going to be coming back. Probably Randy Orton. People are going to go nuts about him when he comes back. Brock came back. Did that steal any of Bray's? I don't think. I, I, no. I really didn't think. But I'm saying now. Listen, Monday night. Baron Corbin finished the trade from Rey Mysterio, and I want to talk about that whole issue as well. So I hope you're writing notes down because there's so many things I've, I've just encapsulated here in a minute. Um, the trade from Rey to SmackDown, and we get Baron Corbin to Raw. I was more happy to see JBL, and I think Corbin, we have all these new toys, all these new action figures that are coming mm-hmm. back. Oh, cool. Baron Corbin's back. Or as much as I love Elias, I walk with Elias. You know, he's a Pittsburgh boy. Right. Okay, Elias is back. Like, there's going to be cuts again, guys, and you're going to get mad that maybe Elias gets cut because, cool, we can't have him sing every week. We have Bray that's got something to do. We have, you know, your one of your pillars in Riddle and Rollins that have to continue. As long as three hours is, it's a long time for Raw. But if Trips is going to do it right, we're going to get longer matches. We're going to get storylines that mean something to carry from month to month. We don't need 150 wrestlers on the roster. And that goes for both AEW and WWE. There's just too much, maybe, on each roster. No, that's that's a valid point. You know, uh, like you said, I, who really cares? Like, maybe yeah, I was. I'll admit, I was excited to see Elias back, but it really wasn't like he was gone because right. Ezekiel. I mean, but his he, his career's cut short. He's done. Let's just put it out. Here. I mean, uh, you know, and then Baron Corbin. Yeah, I was not excited to see Baron Corbin at all. I could care less. Yes, it's going to do good for his career having JBL there. Yes, I agree, but it will have it will do good for him having JBL as his manager, uh, as the one behind him. Um, it's going to help him. I feel like uh, I like how they're going to call him the new wrestling god. I love that. Um, his his attire know, needs spruced up, though. Yeah, for sure. Sorry, I cut you off as well. So go ahead and finish what you were gonna say. I don't know, but like, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I'm not happy to see Cor- Corbin back. Yes, I like again that they are calling him the new wrestling god, but I'm not excited to see him back. And you know, there are yes, 
people are going to have to get get used to it. There will be more cuts coming. You know, like you said, around WrestleMania season. Yeah, they find a new toy sooner sooner than later. It's it's essentially. Yeah. Listen, it, it it happened in the '90s, in the '80s, and you know so far back that people just weren't in territories after a while because your services weren't needed. It's just, just there's this thing out there called the internet that we're on that we understand. We're I'm throwing shade at it right now. We just didn't know that the Rock and Roll Express went to Smoky Mountain for a little bit and left NWA because there was contract negotiations or. Don't fact check that. I'm just throwing it out there. You know, just stuff like that. It, we just thought, ah, well, they're going to go do a tour at Smoky Mountain or the Midnight Express or the Road Warriors. It was about contracts. People didn't know it. Now we know when people take a crap. And, and, you know, it's, it's just, it's yeah. too, it's too much sometimes. You have to just enjoy it. All right. So let me roll back to... Bray Wyatt first. Then we got Ray. Then we have other things, Brock. and then, But, all right. So, Bray Wyatt. Well, where are we going with this? Would, uh, who Who's his first opponent? Who, who, who do you see prediction-wise that, you know, I don't think he wrestles for a while, first off. But who, where do you think we're going with this? Yeah, I, I think you keep him off of... Uh, Maybe at least till I, I wouldn't say as far as um, the Rumble, but I'd say at least Survivor Series. Um, I, I wouldn't put him on uh, Crown Jewel. I, I wouldn't do that. No. Um, although you know Saudi Arabia has that money deal, you know. Um, so if they want him, they're going to get him. You know. Uh, but I don't. I, I don't think it's smart to put him on that show right away. Um, I definitely, I've heard the rumors about uh, that he is going to be a part of some type of, uh, at that Survivor Series, a part of a War Games match. Don't quote me on that. I don't Ooh. know if that's true. they like a rumor. Right. So. I'd be all right with that. I think that, I, I think that would be okay to slide him in to something like that to start. And then that's where he gets a feud from. I, I don't want him in the Royal Rumble match. Not I, I don't I, I don't Bray does not be associated with a title for a while. No. Yeah. I think that hurts him more than helps him. Um last Friday night, real quick, he came out, he gave probably one of the one of the touching and I, I, I thought it was really, you know, rotunda talking. Um, that he was welcome back and everything. It just was so awkward the way he was thanking everybody and the mask came up. I thought there was more to tell. The show cut, at least on in Pennsylvania where I get it, I don't know if it's Pittsburgh or Johnstown or whatever pipes the TV in, but the SmackDown cut like with three minutes left. So I kind of felt it was rushed. They were trying to tell us a story, but it was never complete. I felt like, is the is the in-house, you know, wherever they were, I don't remember, getting more out of this? Why are they hiding this from us? What the heck's going on? Why did Fox, Johnstown or Pittsburgh or whatever, uh, why did they cut it? Like, I felt something was wrong with that promo. Just to find out that's where it was cut. Like, that was... It was a s- emotional yet stupid promo for his return in my books. No, for sure. Like I, I loved the promo for sure, but the ending, yeah, it was a, you know, abrupt ending per se. Um, but like, I think the, and you kind of brought this up earlier with the, uh, other Bray Wyatt character, the fiend, I guess, uh, you kind of brought this up, you know, Maybe he's going to be that fiend too. And then also himself. Um, so maybe this is like a a split personality thing. So maybe his first match is against himself cinematically wise? I but, would hope not. But, I would. No, I'd hope not too, but 
stranger things have happened. Yeah, no doubt. Um, so that's kind of Bray a little bit. How are you on this whole Judgment Day and Dom and Dom and Ray and Dom and Rhea? The Judgment Day and the OC, Judgment Day and Edge, Judgment Day and Beth. It seems like the Judgment Day has a lot of people that hate him, them. And yeah, none that, of the stories are closed. Yeah, exactly. It's 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 uh you know I love the I love that Dominic is with the Judgment Day. I loved when when he attacked Ray and attacked Edge at uh at the uh, pay per view. I I loved I loved that um that was awesome. So I loved him becoming a part of Judgment Day. Um. Now, I, I I do feel like they are yeah they are in too much, too many too many stories going on there. Um, I like the Rhea Ripley and like she's kind of like the uh, dominator I guess over Dominic. Uh, oh yeah, if that makes sense. Oh, um, we we get your picture. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, maybe there's a little bit of thing going on there. I think she's more than just Poppy. <laughs> yeah. S and M BDM, whatever, all those initials that maybe we yeah. shouldn't talk about. Yes. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, it's not like, I like what they're doing with her and Dominic as well. Um, and I like the teases that they're doing with that. Um, and I, I feel like, you know, and I, I don't know if you noticed that the crowd, uh, few weeks ago, they started chanting uh, Eddie's son. Yep. I, lo- I feel like they're going to tease or they're going to say that he is, and that's what they're going to bring it back to, that Dominic is Eddie's son. I thought the same thing. I really did. And I think that's where Ray gets to hit his son, and we get some fighting there, because listen, we understand, hey, listen, uh, we understand that Ray is now on SmackDown, they are on Raw, we don't know if there's a draft, it's usually the day after Survivor, or like the day before Survivor Series, or in and around that area, which makes no sense for brand versus brand then, so maybe that's not going to happen this year, like a lot of questions coming up, but I love that they separated them because this is this is a WrestleMania match if it happens. Yeah. We can't have them around each other from now to WrestleMania. I don't know if that story has enough legs to get that far unless you continue to add stuff. So Ray wanting to quit. I love it. It'll be brought up. It'll be hinted here and there every once in a while. Cool, fine and dandy. Maybe they cross paths at a live event in, you know, Poughkeepsie or wherever the heck they're going to. Okay, keep them off of pay-per-views or streaming live events or whatever the heck they're called nowadays. Keep them off right. of, from, from each other. But he hears that his son is doing this. He hears about Eddie's name being called. He hears this. I like that now. Now this is intriguing me that they're completely different and they're not going to see eye to eye. Exactly. I just feel I- that now that they have the OC involved, like with AJ again, ah, uh, this was rushed. Like this is going to be an event at Saudi or uh, whatever. There's just too much now because Edge isn't done. You, you just had Edge and Beth start this whole thing. And that was cool to have Edge and Beth against Finn and Rhea, essentially. Or punishment, or I mean, yeah, I always call him punishment Martinez because he's my cousin. You know that punishment Martinez and, and Rhea, whatever. However, you make up that mixed tag team, cool. You have Ray. And da, 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 da. I just now you're throwing the OC in this. You're like, what storyline makes sense right now with the Judgment Day, which wraps back around for Mark for one second, then I'll let you run it again. Yeah, I don't know if I like them. I have not been on board with them because it still doesn't make any sense. What do we need? What, what are they trying to tell us? What judgment day, at least when they had edge, he was a prophecy, so to speak. And, and he was telling us stuff. 
they're not giving us a message. What the hell is the judgment day? You no, know, I, I, I completely agree. Like, yeah, what what is the judgment day like? Uh, I agree. And it felt like more of like the the brood the brood esque Yes. A like brood two point when Edge was with the Judgment Day. Um and so yeah, I'm just like like I like it, don't get me wrong. I like what they're I like what they're doing. I love what they're doing. Try it. Try it. I um, I do like it. I don't get me wrong. I do like it. I just I need a focus. <laughs> I made a mean face right there, by the way. If anybody besides the pictures hanging on the wall in here didn't see it. I'm like, I need a focus. That's all. I'm 45. I can barely understand a gnat sometimes. Uh, <laughs> but is, I, I, go ahead. Go ahead. But I definitely see, like, so I honestly don't think, I honestly don't think that uh, Ray Mysterio going to SmackDown. It's going to stop the Judgment Day from going over there. And that's just because of – it seems to me lately that everybody gets to go wherever they want to. That was my next question. That was going to feed it right to you. Are we getting the end of a brand split? And then I'll, I'll throw the caveat on this then once you answer. I, I want to say yes. But I'm hoping no, because I love the brand separation. I love the brand split. Um, and that's just because, you know, uh, again, go, going back to the too many toys, if you're on separate, if you keep them separate, then people have – people get more TVV time. And so I feel like the – I feel like, yes, it's going to happen. We are at the end of it. But I'm hoping no. I, two years ago, I wanted the end of the brand split because it was probably needed. It may be needed now, but now you made the exact point I was going to say. We have a ton of toys again. With a ton of new toys, Brock being back, Bray being back, the, the bloodlines by far the number one thing there, like it or not. And the number one thing in the bloodline right now is Sami Zayn. Um, all of that gets ample TV time. Um, Rhonda is there. So Fox wants her all over the TV. You're going to get returns of Charlotte. Maybe Sasha, maybe Naomi. They're popping around. You know, who knows? Bailey is always great on TV. So we have this brand split and it ends. Well, guess what? USA wants Bailey. Fox wants Bailey. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bailey's on both shows. Well, that means uh, Zelina Vega is not. That means, again, the whole toys thing. We need the brand split nowadays, folks. We really do. Do we need a third hour of SmackDown? No, we do not. Do we need another show? No, because then you get saturation. Just think, longer matches, which then in a sense, as I said the same thing, longer matches means less time for Elias and Corbin and Dolph Ziggler and people like that. We're not trying to solve the world hunger or anything. We're not trying to solve wrestling either because we don't know what the hell's going on. But we just want it to make sense sometimes. Agreed. Yes. Uh, you know, and then like, do you, you know, because you, you notice that they're sending people down. They're sending guys and girls down to NXT again. Is that a demotion? Is it? You know. I, a couple of years ago, when it was the black and gold brand, I would have said, you know, sending KO down for a little bit, that's awesome. Because let's not let's not pull punches, Ryan. I, NXT was the hottest thing in NXT, in WWE for a while. The best. Oh, yeah. When the sure. Undisputed Era was down there and all those people like that, the best thing going. 2.0 yeah. didn't – it was okay, but it wasn't great. 
Now we get this brand back. Is it a demotion? I, Shinsuke's down there. Apollo's down there. I mean, people that are all on these main rosters. I mean, Randy, Mandy Rose, I think, definitely redefined her craft down yeah. there. So it helps. It's better for people. But you sent Shinsuke Nakamura down there? What? Well, what did he have to define his craft for? I don't know. And, and and it could be just just a one-time thing, but I've heard that they are sending him down there for more shows. So I, I don't know. I kind of see it as a demotion. I do too. I mean, even – listen, Mandy Rose is – she excelled down there. Now I think when she comes to the main roster, she – see, I just said it like that. When she comes back up to one of the other shows – I think now she gets this mega push up there or, or whatever. Yes, I think it does help some people. But I, I will say this one. I mean, Shinsuke Nakamura, you know, come on. he Shinsuke Nakamura is the one that just blows my mind. It, it be, because you have nothing for him to do? Or is it because he's rehabbing? Are they using mm-hmm. NXT as a rehab center? And I don't mean drugs or anything like that. That's that sounded horrible right. the way it came out of my mouth. An injury rehab. Yeah, and see like that's what they used OVW for as well. Ah. Back in the developmental days. And so they brought like Edge to OVW. Um, you know, they brought Mark Henry down here to OVW. And so yeah, that that's a good valid point too. They they could be sending him down to rehab an injury. So I I don't know. Uh, I'm still not on board with NXT again yet, though. How are you really feeling about NXT? We really don't talk a lot about NXT, actually, either. Like, I watch NXT, but it's not something I really keep up with too much. Um, Yeah, so, I mean, I I like what they've done with Mandy. I love Toxic Attraction. Uh Yes. I love them. Yeah. <laughs> like, how can you go wrong with toxic attraction? Um, yeah, I love Braun Breaker. Braun Breaker is awesome. I really like him. Um, I can't wait for him to get moved up, but I hope they don't move him up too soon. That's the thing. Like, right now, you move – these are my thoughts. You move Braun Breaker up right now. There's two other monsters waiting for him yeah he gets fed to one of them and i I have it be brawn or almost so they're trying to push again um i think he gets fed right off the bat i mean he's not gonna run right i mean i i don't want gunther losing the ic title to ray but i think it's gonna happen and i think gunther actually again gets pushed a little bit more um Who's a U.S. Oh, Rollins is a U.S. champ. Clearly, mm-hmm. you know he's going to have that for a little bit. If anybody, I thought maybe Riddle getting the win to kind of elevate him a little bit, which I, longtime listeners, you should know this too. I I despise Riddle. I just it's not a gimmick I can get into. I don't I don't support the get ready hate for people that support it. I don't support the four twenty before all of that. So I I just. I don't need that. That's again. I have a remote, right? I don't. I'm not talking bad, but when he comes on, I'm going to check out what the score is on Monday Night Football. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I'm being honest, very transparent. So, yeah, essentially that. I we've completely. If, if there was a list that we were running with, it has been thrown away. Um, <laughs> what else? <laughs> Uh, how are you on the bloodline? Since I did bring them up, do you do you really love it? Do you want Roman ever to lose these titles? Now, I, I I would like I would like to see him lose the titles. I love the bloodline. Don't get me wrong, I love the bloodline. I love that they brought Solo Sokoa up um, to join, and I love that I love the uh, thing with um, with uh, Sami Zayn and was it uh, J- Jimmy or Jay? One of the two. Is Jay? Yeah, yeah. With Jay, I love I love that thing that they got going on. The teasing, like of, is maybe Jay's gonna 
you know, get out of the bloodline possibly, or maybe they're going to actually end up throwing Sammy out. You know, one of the two is going to happen. Um, but then, you know, does that mean Jay goes off on his own and does and the Usos are no more if that happens? So like, but now with Roman, I would love to see him lose the belt. Not any, not the belts, not anytime soon. But I'd like the belts to be back on different shows. I don't like the yep. if you want to unify titles, put them in one title. Make one new belt. I agree. It's same thing with the tag team titles. Like since they've been yeah. unified champions, so we'll just engulf this whole thing. Since they've been unified champions, well, how long? They, how many times they defend them? Once, twice? Again, don't fact right. check. It's probably a bit more because there's live event tag titles on the line at Hershey, Pennsylvania, or whatever. I understand that on paper. Yes, they're defended, but real competition defended. I don't know. I those need split up. Yeah. Or make one, make a new set of titles, and it'd just be for all brands. I mean, and then travel and defend them. Yeah. So, okay, so that brings this question then: Who does Roman lose them to by WrestleMania? Why WrestleMania? I don't think the Roman Rock match is for the titles. I think it's for the moniker head of the table. And I believe we're getting it at WrestleMania. Yeah. I'm like, I, I, I don't know. Do you drop him to now? Does he drop both belts? Does he, does he defend one at one, you know, special pay-per-view and then Logan Paul's not going to win them. Let's just say that right <laughs> off the bat. Logan Paul's not going to win the belts. If he does, I'll be shocked. <laughs> Um, if he does, I'll shave my hair or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that. I'm, I'm, I'll hold you on that one. But let me. I know you will. Let me stir the pot then. Why not Logan Paul? Why not? Because listen, he's he's an athlete. He does, he he had a couple of matches were good to better than good, understandably. Then you can have him attacked. I mean, nobody wants Logan Paul as champion. Nobody. But he shows up Monday night. Kevin Owens kicks his ass and takes one title. And I'm just saying Kevin Owens. I don't know who I'd pick. Kevin Owens kicks his ass, take one title. Well, he's still got one, and he's going to go show it off on SmackDown. Uh, I don't know. Whoever who, who's on SmackDown, that he takes it. Then you get the titles back on. But now... You've already had the Rock kind of promo on Roman, and yeah, on Roman saying, "See, you're not the head of the table." Da, 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 da. So now Roman's not worried about the titles. Now he's worried about the real bloodline of his family, and this leads up to WrestleMania, the probably the main event of a WrestleMania. Because listen, how can you not have Rock and Roman end the show? You're not going to have it at match six on night mm-hmm. one. Right, it's not gonna. It's not. All titles will be on night one, and then you'll have like grudge matches on night two or whatever. Why not yeah. Logan Paul? He can have them for a week. You can have him do his David Arquette stuff for a week. It's gonna be noteworthy across the freaking world because he's a YouTube sensation. We'll all hate it, but it could progress a story better. Because if Roman loses one night and then loses the next night, what does that do for Roman's 900-year reign that he's just been on? Yeah, no, that's that's a good point, and I might have just eaten my words right there. I would um, – get ready. Get, Ryan, you cover your ears. I would fucking hate that. But I'm just saying it makes sense. I might have talked everybody in the world into it, but why not? Go yeah. ahead. Eat your words. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be a hard, hard words to swallow. But yeah, um, for sure. Um, you know, th- that is a valid point. Uh, it would be, it would put good, I, it would put more eyes, I would feel like, on the company. Um, 
that it, you know, Logan Paul being on, being in WWE, being signed by them, that started putting eyes on them now. Yeah. Um, Because he does have a huge, massive YouTube following. And so, like, and then, you know, the boxing and him and his brother and everything. So, like, yeah, definitely that would be, that's a good point um, for sure. Uh, True wrestling fans would be so pissed. (laughs) Oh, yeah. So pissed. Great way to tick people off and piss people off. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. So there, yeah, uh, the Usos then essentially just lose the title. The, the bloodline explodes then, essentially, boom, and then the Usos just end up losing. Uh, the Usos can lose back to back nights and still be one of the greatest tag teams in, in WWE history. They've lost yeah. enough, won enough that it, 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 their title reigns are irrelevant now. It just makes them look good that they have all the titles. And now let's talk about another key factor in this thing because we have uh we have you know austin theory with the money in the bank briefcase yeah does he cash in say logan paul wins does he cash in immediately and win the bounce from logan paul or does he cash in on roman reigns yeah exactly yes uh all of them these titles again. That I'm just gonna say. I mean, maybe it doesn't happen in Saudi. Maybe it's not Logan right. Paul. Maybe it's. By the way, if you have not noticed, and you only get your wrestling news from either Can Crushers or the Final Count, um, there's no pay per view or streaming live event, or it would always be a pay per view to me. There is yeah. no pay per view between uh, Survivor Series. and... And the Royal Rumble. That means nothing yeah. in December. And day one has been scrapped as well. So there's a, like two and a half months. But that's the buildup that you need for The Rock and Roman to rumble, to meet face to face. And then to sign a match for Mania. All being via Skype or whatever they're going to say it's on because you're you may see the rock at royal rumble you're not going to see him at the next one whatever it's called uh, backlash or what would anyway no whatever the february one is and the march one it's the six month build up then i right. i want that yeah for sure uh definitely my i definitely want to see rock and roman i think we will see a rock and Roman at WrestleMania. Um, like, let it happen, please. Yeah. And, and the thing is, Ryan, I want to see family members. Uh, I yeah. know, like, often Seeker or a little bit older, but I mean, I want anybody that's engulfed into this bloodline that's, you know, Nia Jax comes back and, and like, and like makes homage to the rock saying no he really he is the he's the head of the table not you roman you're you're maybe a a a predecessor when you know just like when the pope dies there's the next pope or when the queen dies does he when the rock dies you could be head of the table he might not be in wrestling but he's here now so he's the head of the table so this is this could be flair steamboat you know just have matches for a while well, they'd be as great as Flair and Steamboat. I don't, I don't know, but just saying, uh, this could go on for a while. Essentially, is is where I'm where I'm at. Hundred percent, yes. We just yes. don't need titles around this whatsoever, at all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it it's more more than about a title. Yeah, um, for sure. Uh, I don't know. What else do you want to talk about WWE wise? Is, um, is there anything else that's like yes? What about what's your thoughts on Dexter Loomis? I love the Dexter Loomis and Miz thing. Um, now apparently Miz has an injury though. Yeah. Did, um, did you put the air quotes up when you said injury? <laughs> yeah, apparently, yeah. <laughs> um. I've I've loved Dexter. I, I love Dexter down in NXT. I, I love that 
the dude would scare the bejesus out of me if I met him. Like, I don't know. It, it, it feels like that's him. Like, I believe his name is Scott Shaw or something like that because when he got released, yeah. he, he was doing some stuff on the indies. Like, I really think that's him. You know how The Undertaker was The Undertaker everywhere in his life? I think Scott Shaw is Dexter everywhere in his life. And he scares so, me. At the age of 45, I'm scared Shaw. of him. What? It's Sam Shaw. Oh, Sam Shaw. Okay, yeah, there you go. And he was actually also in LVW. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, because he was actually in Impact uh, for a little bit, too, from Gut Check. Yes. Um, yes. Scott, so you know, Scott yeah. Shaw was – this is horrible. I brought up Scott Shaw because I think he was my sixth grade social studies teacher. <laughs> I knew it was Shaw. <laughs> But I, Scott Shaw is my social studies teacher. Good. <laughs> That's great. But no, I love it. You love it. I'm, I'm guessing. Like, there, yes. what's gonna be? What's gonna be the end all though for Miz and uh, Loomis before I start calling him Mr. Shaw and ask him where Kentucky's at? <laughs> now, uh, I, like, so I, I feel like. That there will be a payoff to this. Uh, will we find out whatever happened that they somehow can't seem to tell what happened to the Miz? And all he's saying is it's he who shall not be talked about or who he who shall not be named. Like, why are you not naming what did it, what happened behind closed doors? Basically, <laughs> you know, um, will it come out? <laughs> I hope. I hope. And guys, of course, if you're listening to this, um, it would come out Monday anyway. It wouldn't come out last night. If you're listening to this and you know something, w- listen, we're not watching SmackDown. Uh, SmackDown's on right now as we're recording. We do this every Friday. You know how it is. We'll talk about SmackDown next week. So whatever happened on SmackDown, we'll get to. But yeah, I I don't. Who do you think is whom? Do you think there's somebody else with Dexter? Do you think it links back to Bray? You know, it I, that that's a very well possibility. Um, and maybe that's why he keeps referring he should he who should not be named, or you know, and that's very well possibility. Because there, there's also been somebody else linked to Bray being linked to returning as well. Eric Redbeer, Eric Rowan. I feel like, yeah, he would be a great um, person to put with Bray and uh, and Dexter too. That you know, just the characters they line up with something for Bray as well. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, do you keep running? Because I'm out of topics. I'm, I've wasted everything. If you if you want to bring up anything else, cool. If not, I uh, I love you. <laughs> I, I I just um. You know, I, let's talk about damage control real quick, um, for sure. Uh, how can we not talk about damage control? I love the damage control. Uh, Bailey and EO and Dakota, I love this thing with them. Um, do we see I, – I see Bailey becoming the women's champion and taking the title from, from Bianca. I do too. But I don't – I Monday night, she has another match against Bianca. Uh, it was announced. I don't know if it's for the title yet. I think it's kind of get another win over Bianca so she can rub it in her face. And then Bianca gets mad, and then we get another title shot. But I don't think it's going to be a Survivor Series. I think it trickles a little bit because – They've announced a women's Survivor Series match, right? Or a War Games yeah. match or whatever. So yeah. it, it lines up clearly damage control, right? Why would it not be damage control? They're, they're your women's faction. Well, the feud is then essentially with Bianca. Uh, uh, maybe Asuka is healthy. Maybe you have to pull somebody else because Alexa's not around or cleared to be back yet until she's Abigail when we find out down the line. So she asks, it was four on four. She asks Candace, 
damage control, this is where I've been going the whole way. Damage control says, yeah, we have a surprise person. And Candace ends up being that fourth member and turning a la mid-match. Yeah. That, now, I would love that, actually. I think she fits um, damage control more than Bianca's group. Yeah. No, I would I would agree with that. Um, I, I feel like, yeah, Candace would make a great addition to damage control for sure. The other, oh, the other two are probably going to be Shotzi and Raquel. Actually, I'll I'll throw that out there right now. The other to make for Bianca's team because they're fighting with the the tag team. They want the tag team title. Da 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 da. So it would be announced. It would be Bianca, Candice, Shotzi, and Raquel against all of Damage Control, and they have a surprise person, and that surprise person being Candice mid match. I yeah. I love. I love damage control. Uh, I do. At first, I was like, Whoa. again, though, what are they controlling? Now they're controlling at least the tag team division. And then when Bailey gets a the title, they'll be controlling all of the division. It was baby steps for me to get to it. Well, they're go- Yeah, they're going to control the women's division. Yeah, well, I oh. didn't think that at first. Oh. Because when they announced it, I'm like, what are you controlling? You're not controlling anything. You just returned. What? Wait, what does this mean? Right. Ryan, I'm old. Yeah. It takes me a minute. Uh, do we see? We'll end on this one. We'll end on this one, folks. We'll have Ryan back. I think I think we need to have Ryan back more to do more catch-ups like this. Uh, plus, I know Jenks is going to have a lot of... I, th- I think it's going to be monthly this that or the other uh, he was telling me sometimes I don't listen you can ask him um, we'll have you back actually join in if we it, whatever we'll just have you on more because this was I love this kind of uh, platform tonight um, where was I going Ryan what was, oh that's it do we get when do we get are we getting Sasha back I, I would love to say yes. We're getting both Sasha, not just Sasha, but and both Naomi. her and Naomi. Yeah, yeah. I win. I say you hold them off to WrestleMania. Make them or Royal Rumble if you want to be a little more earlier, but make it something special when they come back. Yeah, and make it for the tag team titles. Make it for those women's tag titles. Agreed, <clears throat> but. Stirring the pot, I don't want him to win. And it's not because I, I love Sasha. I love Naomi. I want the feud of toxic attraction against damage control to carry or mean something at WrestleMania. Okay, how about a triple threat? <laughs> I, I, I guess you're an ass, but yeah. yes, I, I, I guess that can happen. That, yeah. Guilty. <laughs> Well, yeah, because they, they have a feud going. We're, we're booking six months now down the line. They're, they have a great feud, and then essentially a rumble that Sasha and Naomi return and say, one of them win it. How about this? One of them win it and say, yeah, we're not going after the heavyweight championship. I'm picking my partner, Naomi, and we're cashing in this at, you know, WrestleMania. And essentially, toxic control, damage control, toxic attraction. I'm an idiot. Uh, and they all just kind of intermingle. But they, you, want, you don't get the win from Sasha and Naomi. I, I want I toxic like attraction it. to take the titles from damage control. I, I, like I love them it both. Puts it puts a twist on the on the Royal Rumble. So I love – if that were to happen, I'd love it. Yeah. So, Yes. All right, Ryan, once again, thank you for coming on the show tonight or today or this morning or last night, whenever you listen to it. Um, Give everybody your socials again so they can go out. Guys, it's called The Final Count. He's got a lot of great interviews. He covers wrestling just as much as we do. We connect all the time. Ryan's a ding-dong, a nitwit like I am. We we just have the love of wrestling, and he covers as much as we do. So there's not enough time for you not to follow him. Go ahead. All right. So you can follow me at the final count KY on Twitter, on uh, Instagram and on Facebook. And you can also find 
all of our podcasts, all of our shows on YouTube. And then um, anywhere, you, anywhere you find your podcast platforms, we're pretty much on all of them. Um, Spotify, uh, Apple, uh, uh, iTunes, and just wherever you can find your podcast, we're pretty much there. Um, so go and check us out. And we thank you for your support, any ratings you give us, and um, definitely love to hear your feedback as well. Yeah. Send it to them, rate, review, do all that cool stuff that you do for us over here at Can Crushers. Give a follow, love them. Um, we'll try not to piggyback on back-to-back interviews, or we'll talk more about who we're doing, but we'll get there. Sure. We'll get there. Hey, it, oh, yeah. if the wrestlers reach out to both of us and say, hey, let's let's do some stuff, and we're like, oh, well, okay, let's do some stuff, right? Right, right. All right, Ryan, I'll let you go tonight. Again, I say this every time I talk to you. I love you, brother. Thank you for everything you've done. Thank you for inviting me into your home, sleeping on your couch, eating pizza, and drinking some pops together. And it was real pops, folks. It was real pops. I wasn't drinking and driving down in Kentucky. I don't have to do that. Um, Yeah, you're always a brother, and I love you. Likewise, brother. Uh, Thank you for having me on again. I've definitely enjoyed this, and I'd love to come back. Always welcome. Knock, knock, knock. The door is open. Thank you. Remember, guys, just because you're trash doesn't mean you can't do great things. It's called a garbage can, not a garbage cannot.